Hello everyone and welcome. 2020 is about to end and I'm ready to set the first month of the year in my bullet journal. For my January 2021 setup, I created spreads around a vintage circus theme and we're starting right away with the cover page. The circus team came up to me after listening to the greatest showman soundtrack one night, but instead of doing a little theme around the movie, I found it easier to brainstorm ideas using related elements and incorporate those into my bullet journal. I looked up for some inspiration on Pinterest, and by searching up, I found all of these old style flyers and posters where you will see the name of the show and all of the information about when and where. You will mostly see a variation of colorful backgrounds, mainly using red, blues, and rusty yellows, and I went for those as my main color scheme. But first, for my setup, I'm outlining everything with my black gel pen before going in with the details. My vision was to have the cover page looking like those old posters where the name of the show is going to be the name of the month, so I have January written in this big bold letter font. I actually used dafon.com to come up with a fun font for this theme. If you don't know what dafon.com is, this is a website full of really nice and aesthetic fonts available for you to download to your computer, and it even has a tutorial for anyone who wishes to install them. While I have downloaded some of them, I also like to go to the website for inspiration as well. This time, I searched for a circus related font and came across this one by Dan Roseman. So I try copying the shape of the letters and you can actually type the word to see a preview of how it looks like with the font you've chosen. After finishing up all of the outlining details, I started to add color to the page. The first thing to be taken care of was the background for which I use a very common design you'll see in those vintage posters where you have lines coming from one focal point of the page, which is the center for this time. And the further the line is from this point, the wider becomes the space between other lines. I used a very soft blue marker to outline the pattern since I didn't want any harsh lines for this part, and then proceeded to color in every other surface, so one space was white, then blue, then white, then blue, and so on. For the title, I used a soft yellow to fill the layers in, and I failed to mention, but these two last markers are from the Miniso store and they're pretty much dupes for the my liners. The color ended up blending in way too much with the background, like it kind of got lost, so I went ahead and added a drop shadow with a black Rayola super tip. The back design was already quite bold, even with the soft blue, so I really needed a bolder title so January could stand out, because of course, that's the name of our show. At the bottom of the page, I drew a circus stand, and because I still wanted the title to be the main focus, I actually used a black color pencil instead of going in with a black marker. Also, I think this really helped in getting that vintage look further, so I'm glad I made the decision. After that, I used a red Crayola super tip to add yet another background to the poster by making vertical lines across the spread on the outside edges. Inside of a simple banner at the top, I wrote down 2021 presents, and I thought that was a cute detail, and I kept adding some more text here and there along some embellishments. I also made these sort of flaps with a light brown paper to make it look like they're holding up the poster, and I placed one on each corner. Some more details here, I used a red gel pen to add little stars in the top banner and along both sides of the spread, and one last thing, I took out my weekly stamps to add a day of the week on each side of the circus tent, just adding to the vintage visual and that's the cover page done. On the left, I decided to add a simple quote page, so I prepared a piece of scrap paper to write down one line from one of the songs from the Greatest Showman soundtrack. This line says, A million dreams are keeping me awake from the song A Million Dreams, and I just feel like listening to the music on repeat all night again. To write it down, I use a set of clear alphabet stamps and a permanent marker for the ink. For the words A MILLION, I use all caps, and then for the words are keeping me, I use lower caps stamps. Finally, for dreams and awake, I use my handwriting with some full calligraphy using a black marker.
To finish it up, I added some doodles around and lastly a piece of washi tape with gold stars and black background at the top and another one at the bottom. We're now moving into the next spread which is the monthly overview. For more than a few months now, I've had the same three sections on this page and I honestly don't see it changing anytime soon. I may change the layout just a little bit every other month, but I always make sure to have a big boxy calendar, a smaller section for notes, and a weekly tasks checklist or tracker, however you may want to call it. Just like before, I started by outlining all of these sections with my black gel pen before other details. But by now, you'll see that besides those three parts, I also added a small popcorn stand at the bottom right corner where I had some space to draw something in. You'll also see that I'm excessively using my ruler to draw every single line in and that's just because my hands are extremely shaky and unfortunately, the day that I was filming this setup, I couldn't quite trust my ability to make any type of lines, even for the smaller bits. Of course, the stand had to be vintage looking and tied to the popcorn stand are four balloons grouped together floating in the right edge of the spread. You'll also see me using some stencils throughout the setup. I recently got a new set and they're just there to make bullet journaling easier for me. But of course, you don't necessarily need those to set your spreads. For the days of the week, I thought about adding a cord with triangle flags, like those all around any circus, carnivals and festivals, and for the flags, I used the craft paper by cutting triangular shapes and pasted them in their place. I also added craft paper as background for the section's titles to tie everything together. I used the red marker to outline every other flag as well as to highlight the section for the numbers of the month in the calendar, making straight lines across the first row of every weekly section. After having the thick straight lines down, I then went in right at the bottom edge of those lines with a stencil that has a wavy pattern on one of the sides. And I did this because this reminded me of those drapey fabrics on the tents that have a similar pattern and I thought it was perfect for the theme. After this, I finished up the flags by outlining them with the soft blue and yellow markers making sure of alternating the colors with the red that I used before. The next thing was to add the first letter of each day on the flags and I used the uppercase alphabet stamps for that and for the notes and tax titles I used the lowercase stamps. The stamps and craft paper really helped me to get the vibe I was going for but I especially ended up loving the look of the black color pencil on the drawings that I made for my spreads so of course after adding the days of the month I went ahead and coloring the popcorn stand Varying the pressure that I apply by going heavier on the areas facing away from the front and lighter on those facing the front. Lastly, we have the balloons and the final detail is a piece of washi tape placed on the top right corner. Next pages are my trackers. For these ones, I thought about a very fun idea to have the headers on these circus pointer signs made out of wood and they're like nailed in a main pole or column and their signs are kind of crooked and whatnot. So to recreate the wood, I just use some pieces of the light brown paper and I glued the main pole in the middle of both pages and one pointer on each page. To make the pointers fancier, I used the star washi tape as an outline. Since the tape was rather thicker than I needed it to be, I cut it in half and started placing it in the pages with the help of an exacto knife. I actually thought about hand drawing the outline with fancy designs, but since I already had the washi tape, I just ran with it, and I think both options would have taken the same time, but this way makes the spreads really pop in my opinion. Now talking about the layouts, on the left page I'll have my habit trackers. I highlighted the headers of each tracker with the main colors, blue, yellow and red, and then proceeded to add a calendar below the headers. I think I've repeated this in like my last three Buja setups, but I said this kind of layout for habit tracking is absolutely my favorite, and the time consumption from setting this up has been something I've been trying to minimize for a while now, and my solution was to buy calendar stamps and they would have made things easier. But 
the first order that I bought got lost in the mail somehow and the second one actually arrived the day after setting this up. That's what I get for buying from Aliexpress I suppose, but at least now I can be assured that my next setup shall be quicker. I know I could have just draw the outside boxes, but the thing is, I really need this spread to be as visually helpful as possible so I can easily analyze and recognize my habit patterns each month. I've tried other layouts before and they simply don't work for me. And actually, habit tracking is one of my main drivers for bullet journaling, so I hope that the importance that I give to these threads really comes across. I use the lowercase stamps to stamp each title of my six trackers, and since these stamps are kind of bigger, I only use one word that represents that habit well enough. This month, I'm tracking every day that I exercise and read, as well as every day of no junk and no fast food, and waking up early and posting on Instagram. I'm really bad at the last one, so I'm just trying to hold myself more accountable by adding this new section here. Lastly, I use the uppercase stamps for the titles. I continue by stamping the title on the right page, which is my mood tracker. I'm trying a mood tracker for the first time ever since I started bullet journaling. I did some productivity tracking before, similar in concept with this one, so I'm excited to see how this one works out for me. I will give it a few months and I will combine it with some journaling as well when I feel the need to write down my feelings and then I can see where my headspace was at the moment. For this one, I still use the concept of the circus team. So I made 31 entry tickets for the show, scattered all over the spread. Once again, I use the stencil with a wavy pattern to get those sides of the tickets to look like the ones you get at the circus and carnivals and they say something like, admit one, or something similar. Again, you don't necessarily have to use the stencils, it just makes things easier for me. I had a lot of fun coming up with this spread and the concept behind it, so I'm really hoping for it to be a regular one in my monthly setups. I want to start checking in with my mental health more often and I think this will be quite helpful for me. I'm going to color code my mood and fill one of these tickets a day to what it corresponds, but I kinda didn't want to have a whole area color in so I thought about pasting a smaller piece of the brown paper right in the center and this separates the ticket in two areas, so I just have to color in the outline. Lastly, I'm adding the color code on the top right corner of the page and didn't write down the corresponding mood to its color, but I'm using black for bad days up to red for a great day, along with brown, yellow and blue for the other moods. The next two pages are my brain dump and a playlist, and the process for the headers is the exact same as before, so I decided to skip that for the video. On the left, we'll have the brain dump for which I only added one element at the bottom of the page, and it's a shadow figure of Hugh Jackman's ringmaster from the movie, where he's holding his arms extended up in the air. I think it's the one used for the movie poster, and it's just another nod to the film which inspired this month's theme. I colored the figure in with a black color pencil and lastly for the spread I stamped the title with uppercase stamps leaving the spread as simple as possible. I continue by stamping the title for my playlist and this is also a spread that I'm trying for the first time. I used to have what is called a currently spread to write down what I was reading, watching and listening to but because I'm starting a movie journal and keeping my reads on my yearly setup I decided to leave this page just for music. I prepared this piece of paper to have it look like what I will say reminded me of a program where you can see what shows are going to be there for you to see. Finally, the last pages of this setup are for my first weekly spread. I'm doing an 8 boxes type of layout where you divide each page into 4 equal sections so you have 7 boxes for each day of the week and another one for whatever you may need. I'm designing each box to make them look like vintage fosters where once again you have those colorful backgrounds 
but this time I'm drawing an almost oval shape in the center to leave it for daily tasks and to-do list. I came across this type of graphics for posters where you'll have the main attraction or main show to promote the circus inside oval shapes and they'll have a banner announcing said attraction's name at the bottom. I didn't quite out those in just yet, I first color in the background with my blue and red markers and just like in the cover page, I'm outlining with the markers because I didn't want any harsh line for this part. For the patterns, I just use vertical and horizontal stripes, alternating between both of those for the boxes, and I designated the color blue for the vertical stripes and the red for the horizontal ones. I also previously added a smaller oval section on top of the bigger one so I could just have a space to write down the dates for each day. I actually got inspiration to come up with this spread from Pinterest, so I will make sure to leave a link to the words that I made not only for this video but for any future video that I make in the description box. I didn't add yellow as a background color because I felt that I would have need a third pattern so instead I reset that color to fill in the smaller oval sections. After that, I added the banners that I made out of the brown paper, sticking them at the bottom and then I went in to outline them with the black gel pen. Now that the daily boxes are done, we'll move into the free space where I personally like to add a mini calendar to later highlight the current week that we are at in this thread. And just below that, I'm drawing a circus cannon without the human cannonball though that I added a few more details, stamping January on top of the calendar as well as every day of the week with my weekly stamps on their own banner. By the way, I just realized I didn't add the dates on the boxes, but I'll make sure to do that after finishing this video. With the cannon all filled in, this monthly setup is completed, so it's now time for a final quick flip through. I'm going to be honest, this one might be one of my favorite setups I've ever done, so I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll be very thankful if you would give it a thumbs up or were to subscribe to my channel for more bullet journal content. Take care everyone, until the next video.